So the time is now 6.08. Um, so I'm calling this meeting of the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission to order. Today is August 5, 2020. My name is Joanne Zygmunt, and I'm chair of the commission. Um, for folks to kick in and then speak directly into it, so we'll have to share some of these as other folks want to talk. Um, please note that this meeting is being video and audio recorded. It's virtually held via Zoom and it's being broadcast live on Brockton Cable Access TV as well as on their YouTube channel. Pursuant to Governor Baker, we're suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the Governor's Order imposing strict limitations on the number of people who may gather in one place. This meeting is being conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Every effort is being made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time. Questions and comments from the public will be welcomed at the end of each agenda item. If you are joining via Zoom, you are muted to prevent background noise that may disrupt this meeting. To unmute yourself, press the unmute button at the bottom left of the Zoom screen, or if you're on the telephone, you can dial star six. Questions or comments may be submitted during this meeting in three ways. So if you're on Zoom, you can type your question into the Zoom chat box. It will be read into the record and or answered. You can also email me at jzygmunt at PlymouthCountyMA.gov. I'll check my emails during this meeting and we'll read those comments and or questions into the record. You can also use the Zoom feature to raise your hand. To do that, to raise your hand, you click the raise hand button in Zoom, or if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine. We'll be able to then know that you would like to speak and we'll be able to give you permission to do that. Um, make sure to state your full name and city or town for the record before you speak, please. Please limit your questions or comments to two minutes so everyone has a chance to participate. The recording of this meeting in minutes will be made available at centralplymouthcountywater.org. Our contact details are on that website as well. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. So we'll now go on to do the quorum call. Commissioners, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Joanne Zygmunt, here. Mark Sotier? Here. Jack O'Leary? Here. Great, thank you. So with three members voting in the affirmative, I declare we have a quorum and we can begin. On tonight's agenda, we have the following. A short presentation on the state of water resources in the district from Mark Sotier, a member of this commission. Questions and answers on the presentation. Public comment approval of minutes from previous meetings, finance report, invoice approval, and any other business. Before I turn it over to Mark, on behalf of the commission, I would like to thank the mayor of Brockton, Mr. Robert Sullivan, and other city and town leaders for joining us this evening. I'll go quickly around the table so folks know who's here. We have Council President Shirley Asak sat next to the mayor. Al, I always pronounce your last name incorrectly. De Girolamo. Right. So thank you, Al, for being here on Senator Brady's behalf. We have Mary Waldron, Executive Director of Old Colony Planning Council. Frank Basler, Count, uh, Plymouth County Administrator. Pine Dubois behind me. She is the um, Chief Executive, Executive Director of Jones River Watershed Association. Mark Sotier, Commissioner, is here. We also have Larry Rowley, DPW Commissioner for the City of Brockton. Susan Nicastro, who is um, Ward 4, um, City Councilor. And at the back of the room, we have um, Nick from City IT, who is helping make us make all this happen for us. Okay, great. All right, so at that point, Mark, I'm gonna turn it over to you for your presentation. <coughs> Thank you, Joanne. Yes. Okay, so um, again, thank you for everybody for attending tonight. And, uh, you know, we're happy to be here and we're happy to um, share our, our thoughts with you on, on what, you know, we see the current problems are, what we uh, want to, uh, you know, propose in, in the future for solutions to work with you. But, but mostly this is about collaboration and let, letting you know that we're here that, to work with you. 
and to solve problems together. And, uh, you know, I think in the past there, there might have been some, uh, you know, things going on with each group that, uh, that wasn't conducive to working together. And I think we're here to, with an olive branch, basically saying that, you know, we're here to work with you. We're here to help you solve problems. We, uh, we think working together is the best way to do it. We actually have funding to help you solve problems and we're willing to use it. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's why we're here. And, and again, the main theme of this tonight is, is collaboration and working together. Mary. So, so just to also let you know that, uh, you know, why this commission exists is from the 1964 Emergency Water Act that, uh, that actually legislatively put this commission uh, in place. And it's, um, it has two representatives from the towns that are in the district and somebody from the city of Brockton, which Joanne is actually. And under its legislative mandate, the, uh, the water district is empowered to do a few things. One is investigate and allocate water sources and supplies within the district to study water supply needs and resources in Plymouth County and adjacent portions of Norfolk County actually, and investigate all pertinent matters relating to water quantity, quality, protection of resources and water supply and treatment infrastructure. So it's a pretty uh, you know, large encompassing mandate that uh, legislatively that uh, this commission has. Again, it hasn't been very active in, in the past, in many years, and uh, you know, we're looking to change that and again, be active and, and work with you. So slide two actually shows the district. Nope, go back, sorry, Mary. So um, as you can see, all the, uh, the arrows lead to that body, big body of water there is Silver Lake. And the, uh, the treatment plant uh, is there obviously, and you know, Brockton on the, uh, on the far east of that. But uh, it, sh it shows the, the ponds, the, the Mont Ponce ponds, and it shows Furnace Pond that actually get diverted into Silver Lake. And then the, uh, the trek, after the treatment plant to Brockton. But that is, that is the district. And one of the challenges of that district, there's, there's three different watersheds that actually are comprised within that district. So it's a little unique in itself. And, uh, and Jones River is one of them. And that is actually the part of Silver Lake. So um, if we could uh, move on, Mary. So you know, the problems that we'd like to address and, uh, and collectively work with you on is, is certainly, you know, it has to do with Silver Lake and Jones River, but also also Stump Brook. And we're going to show you some pictures later that, uh, you know, everything looks the same, whether it's uh, Herring Brook, Stump Brook, uh, the Jones River, um, uh, Furnace Pond uh, uh, that goes to Jones River. They, they all are choked. They all don't have any flow and it creates stagnant water and problems with the water in itself. So increasing the flow, you know, to all through all the bodies of water uh, actually helps water quality. And, uh, you know, we, again, that's something that is a long-term solution, but we want to work on that with you. We want to talk about preventing the deterioration of the water quality at Silver Lake. And that's mostly from improving the water quality at Mont Ponset because the diversions that happen from Mont Ponset into Silver Lake are typically, uh, the water quality in Mont Ponset isn't that of what is the pristine, somewhat pristine waters of Silver Lake. They've been degrading over the years from the Mont Ponset water and uh, you know we look to uh, work with you to improve that. We want to use uh, you know innovative and science-based good management practices for not only Mont Ponset and Furnace Ponds but Silver Lake as well. And then probably most importantly is is working with you and to define and find and develop additional water supplies and sources, you know throughout the throughout the district, um, you know for a long-term solution that that doesn't um, really you know concentrate on taking it out of Silver Lake and the diversions as much. And we think there, there are some, you know, some potential uh, solutions out there that, uh, you know, again, in, in the long term can be attained. And again, the, the, the main goal is a, is a plentiful and sustainable fresh water supply that, uh, you know, we all want that to happen. This is um, a, a pretty telling slide. So this, this, this is actually a uh, the, the south side or the bottom side of that is actually a dam that was built. And, and it was built in the 19, I think, 20s in order to raise the level of the lake a foot uh, to supply, you know, to supply water to Brockton. And, and at that time, I think Brockton was using uh, maybe two or three million gallons a day. And I think the commissioners, you know, the water commissioners in Brockton at that time, you know, thought that three million gallons a day was probably an unsustainable amount to continue. 
today it's uh, I think it's averaged probably nine million gallons a day that that actually comes out of Silver Lake into the system at Brockton, and uh, and and that's not really you know that has really nothing to do with the dam. It really has to do with the diversions that happen from Furnace Pond and mostly from Mont Ponset throughout the year. And there is a cycle that uh, can be the diversions can happen. Um, so during the summer they can't happen. You know, it's a mandate I think from October first and through May is when diversions can happen. And uh, in, in Brockton, the, you know, the management of Brockton controls those diversions, um, you know, through gates and so forth and what goes into Silver Lake. So this is a, uh, you know, it's a really choked up waterway. Uh, this is the natural flow down to the Jones River. And, and what this really, you know, is about is, I think, let's, let's move to the next slide if we could, Mary. So on the other side of that, uh, you know, picture would have been a dam and it goes under a street and this is what doesn't happen and water doesn't flow to the Jones River. And what that is really about is the whole ecology of, the, of Cape Cod Bay because herring migrate up the river. They typically would spawn in Silver Lake and then they make their trek back down to the ocean through the Jones River. And when the water isn't high enough, that can't happen. And through, um, well, there's some slides later on that will show a uh, between uh, the cooperation of, of Larry Rowley and the city of Brockton and, and the DMF, uh, you know, there was a temporary fish ladder that was, that was put in last year and actually herring actually made it into the lake, which was the first time in probably a hundred years that herring have made it into the lake. So, but the other side of that is when herring make it into the lake to spawn, they actually then have to make it out of the lake to get back to the ocean. And uh, if there's no water flow there and they end up getting trapped in the lake. So in improving the river flow is really, you know, essential to, to food supply, uh, you know, fishing. It, it goes a lot further than, you know, what we would think just sitting here talking about the water supply for Brockton. It's really the, the ecology of Cape Cod Bay that is really affected, um, you know, by the herring spawning. And, uh, you know, again, there's, there's people in this room, uh, Pine, for instance, and Brad, if Brad Chase wanted to be here, but he couldn't be here tonight. That could talk a lot more eloquently about that than I ever could, but, uh, but it is an important part of the ecosystem. And I think collectively, we all wanna be part of the solution to get that back because it's sustainability for, for, you know, for everybody, if we could. So this is just a, a picture that shows some of the, uh, the, the water quality. You know, that's, that bottom left slide is the cyanobacteria that happens in Montponset ponds. And we've certainly seen pictures in the past of that West pond that really gets it it, it doesn't have any flow, right? It, the natural flows have been stopped by the dams and when water doesn't flow, it stagnates. And when it stagnates, that's what happens to it. And, uh, and you can see the top right is actually, so water uh, comes to Silver Lake from East Mon Ponset Pond, right? And they are, they are linked, but uh, you can see the water quality coming out of that, that diversion. It's, it's dirty and, and that's just what happens. Uh, it's not quite the green water that is in Westmont Ponset. And that, that's treated uh, and that cyanobacteria comes with weather and seasonality and there's a lot of factors and you know, there's constant treatments. They use a chemical called alum to treat that. And it's, it's a Band-Aid, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's putting a chemical in a natural source. It, it kind of uh, masks the problem, but it temporarily treats it and you know, again, there's all kinds of science around why we should, should or should not use that. But, uh, but the point of this is, you know, dirty water, at least to the level that we would like to see it uh, clean, you know, comes into Silver Lake and, it, and it, it basically makes that better body of water dirtier. And it brings a lot of weeds and, uh, and, and other things into, that, into the lake that, that weren't there before. Uh, many years ago, that was a weed-free lake. Now there's all kinds of weeds because weed seeds flow through the diversion and end up going into the lake. And you know now there's a lot of weeds in the lake. And what we don't want to see is uh, you know cyanobacteria or, uh, or anything else that uh, you know comes from the Montpossa ponds into the lake. So um, nutrient, uh, you know, that's another thing, right? So there's been a lot of studies done about the nutrients in the Montpossa ponds, and most of that you know, is, comes from just the, you know, the septic systems around there, people's, uh, you know, using fertilizers, right? But it's a nutrient rich pond. And when the nutrients get into the water supply, that's where all the weeds come from and it makes the water unhealthy. 
and you know, I think the main takeaway from this slide is, is that 75% of the water that ends up going to Brockton, it actually comes from the diversions of Mont Ponson and Furnace Ponds. So I don't want to get way ahead of ourselves, but you know, if 75% of the finished water that you get every single year comes from the diversions as opposed to the water inside the lake, you know, is it feasible at some point to do a study to see if we can pipe water directly from the diversions into the plant instead of putting that dirty water into Silver Lake? So it's, you know, it's water that comes in anyway, it's getting mixed in with all the Silver Lake water and it's still, and then it, you know, gets into the plant for treatment. But if it could be potentially piped in there directly, would it make sense to, you know, to, to try to look for funding for that pipe to keep that bad water out of Silver Lake? So it's just, you know, again, it's an idea and again, it would, it would be uh, science and studies that would uh, go around that. But I think it's one of the, uh, you know, potential early fixes that could be done to, uh, again, keep the water flowing to Brockton, but keep the bad water out of Silver Lake. So, you know, there's been um, many, many people involved in this over the years and uh, I'm, I'm new to it. And uh, there are, you know, many, again, many people sitting in this room that know a lot more about it than I do. But, but I think what we want to work with you on is, is, you know, again, solutions and, and good practice and management and working together to develop funding sources to solve problems and, uh, and fund studies that can, you know, not only again, solve our short term problems about what's you know, happening in the lake itself, but then the sustainability of the supply, whether that's through Aquaria, MWRA, Han uh, you know, the Pleasant Street Wells and Hanson, there's been a lot of stuff talked about over the years. Some things, uh, you know, a little more than others. Uh, some topics have been abandoned. I'm not even sure why. Maybe because science has said that they don't make sense. Maybe because somebody just didn't want to do them. You know, again, I don't have the history of it, but, but I think there's a lot of things that, uh, that we can revisit you know, as a, as a collective group to find solutions. And those, those Pleasant Street Wells and Hanson, I'm not sure why those, you know, didn't come, you know, didn't thoroughly get developed or the thoughts of them, but from what I was told, they could supply three to 6 million gallons a day um, into the system. And, and again, that seemed like something that, uh, you know, could have, could have happened maybe 10 or 15 years ago and, and somehow it, it didn't, but uh, you know, And that's just one of the things we'd like to look at with you, you know, to see if that's a, another source for water. So this is just a picture of that temporary fish ladder on the bottom that uh, that got put in place by uh, the cooperation of uh, Larry and Larry Rowley and the uh, and the D Division of Marine Fisheries for the state. And uh, and that's a picture of some of the herring that came up. And you know, not only herring came up, but things like uh, American eels came up into the lake. And there was you know over a thousand eels that came up and. I don't have the, uh, the science background or the time to explain how the eels help the ecology of, of all the bo of bodies of water, but they actually do. And they, they stay around for a long time. And, uh, but it's, it's just so good to see, you know, for the first time in a hundred years, herring coming back into the lake. So, uh, you know, addressing these problems, you know, again, the, the goal is to secure resilient supplies for the residents of Brockton and the region have the fisheries again thrive and help the local economies and have healthy and functioning ecosystems. It's one of the most complex water systems in the state. And we have an opportunity, I think, by working together to implement solutions that will serve as examples for sustainable water management across the region and the Commonwealth. And, and again, I, I think the main theme that we wanna leave you with here tonight is that you know, we really wanna work with you to solve the problems. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a collaborative event and, and it's something that, you know, it's not gonna happen overnight, but I think if people are committed to long-term solutions, we can get it done. And, uh, and again, we're not just saying that with our effort, but, but we do legislatively, legislatively, we do get funding and we're happy to put that money to, to the good use for Brockton to work with you to come up with solutions. So just in, in closing, um, again, I, we appreciate your time. I scratched the surface of all of these things and uh, it wasn't about solving problems. It was just about identifying some, some things that are you know, currently on the table for us all. And, uh, and again, there's a lot of work to do to actually solve the problems. But uh, you know, from there, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Joanne or, and see if there's any questions. Or... Great, thank you, Mark. Um, so at this point, we 
I open it up to, to questions and answers. Um, as commissioners, we're here to learn as much as, you know, our folks in the room or those joining us by Zoom or watching on television. Um, so if folks on Zoom do want to to ask questions, feel free to start putting those at jzygdma.gov, and we'll pick your questions up there. Um, but at this time, I'd like to turn it over, I think, to folks in the room. Does anybody have any questions or comments about, you know, the information that Mark talked about? Anything anybody wants to say? thing now that we have to address is the flows and we've been doing flows um, we're pretty close to solving this so Mark the other day when you came in it you said you know you have some money you can help us with well why don't we see what this resource management plan comes up with we may have to spend some extra money just you know tweaking what we're doing now but I, I can say over the last five years and I can say prior to me taking over and I'm not taking all the credit for this the communication between between Brockton is group was not good uh, that we're at the table now trying to work this together instead of pointing the fingers at each other so we have spent a lot of money on this resource management plan and that that, that is all science that's going to dictate on how we divert and how we run these these ponds that that's the statement I wanted to make thank you Larry Mayor Sullivan let me just follow up with the question for Larry, so what is the timeline on that? Because that's been kind of in the work sale, and I it think. Is, and it has, and, and you know, something something like this takes a long time to do because we're doing the seasons, now we're doing flows. Um, the COVID thing slowed it down a little bit. Um, we do, we have to do one more set of flows, and then I think it's pretty well, they'll, they're gonna present it to us. And then when it's, it's finalized, um, we'll be happy to share it with anybody. And, and you know, we're gonna, we're, all of us are gonna have to work together on this. But it, as you can see, if, if, if the blue algae is so high, we won't divert. We're not, we're not gonna pull that water into Silver Lake. So, and most of the time we get the blue algae when we're not, we don't, we can't divert anyway. That's in the summertime, so we can't divert that water. So the timeline, I, I don't know just yet, but we're getting close. Okay. Mayor Sullivan, you were gonna say something? Well, first of all, I wanted to welcome everybody here to City Hall. And, and when Joanne had mentioned, um, you know, about this meeting, I jumped on it. I mean, I think um, what was stated on the screen about collaboration is key, right? I mean, that's what it's all about. Working. together for a common purpose and a shared goal. I do want to thank the DPW Commission. It's definitely six, but I'm not new to city politics. 14 years as a city councilor at large. And um, 10 years, I was the Brockton representative of Plymouth County Advisory Board. So I, I know Frank very, very, very well. I want to thank Senator Brady's um, assistant, Al, for being here. And of course, Council President Shirley Isaac and, and Susan DeCastro. I mean, what it comes down to is water is a resource that all of us, all of us, it doesn't matter if you live in Brockton or Halifax or Plumpton, um, it's, it's, it's a vital asset that we need to make sure we safeguard as we move forward, right, to the next generation, right? I'm a dad of three young kids. I, I, I do want to just piggyback on what Larry was just saying. I mean, there was some, some money. I wasn't mayor. There was some money spent. Uh, and again, because of COVID and the ramifications it's had here in Brockton, 274 loss of lives, there has been some delay. But as soon as that uh, is generated, we're going to share it because without sharing the information, none of us around this table are gonna be able to execute a plan that's gonna help all of us. So I could just tell you, as long as I'm mayor, you have a, an open door policy here at City Hall, right? Because what's good for Brockton is good for the county and vice versa. 
I want to thank Joanne being the Brock representative in the chair. She is a water expert. I'm, when I first got elected, I sat down with her and, and she talked about what happens in London and Europe and, you know, what happens over there, we can do it here. Maybe not 100%, but we can do it. So I do want to thank, thank you. And of course, Mary is, uh, she's the Energizer Bunny. I want to thank OCPC <laughs> and what they're doing. Um, but none of this, and I see my good friend Charlie on, on, on the call. Charlie, how are you? Uh, none of this could happen tonight without Nick Alexio. in IT. So uh, all, all I can say people, much like your volunteerism, it's to help the people of the county. So um, I'm going to work with you. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're going to come up with a plan for um, benefits to Brockton and neighboring communities. And I can just make that pledge to you. Thank you. Charlie. Thank you, Joe. And thank you for inviting me to this meeting. I have to say, uh, I had heard a lot about this, but I'm um, in collaboration. Once again, I'm not going to repeat what Mayor Selden said, but that's what we're all about. And we're here to work together for the betterment of Brockton and the surrounding. We need to do on our end, we're prepared and uh, opening up lines of communication and sharing information because we're not all experts on water. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> still, we appreciate your time and your expertise. So, you know, um, we're here to work with you and, um, and, you know, do what's best. So thank you again. And I appreciate, and I have to say commissioner Rowley, I, um, I have anytime I've reached out to him and I do want to, at one point he did suggest a tour of, um, a silver Lake at one point. I'd like to uh, take that tour. I did tour Aquaria, but I think, um, you know, as officials, as elected officials, the more we're hands-on and that we see the process and we're involved, I think it helps us make uh, good decisions. And uh, so I know he's always ready to help us and my colleagues as well. So thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you. you again. So, thank you. you know, whatever we need to do on our end. Great. Al, do you want to say anything else? And then I'll pass no, it over I to will. you, Mary. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Hi, I'm L.D. Geronimo. I'm here representing you know, Senator Mike Brady. Uh, he was unable to make it. Um, Senator Brady took over from Tom Kennedy back in 2015. Uh, at the time, we weren't aware of this whole issue. So the senator, he represents six of the eight municipalities involved in the water district. Um, spring of that year, we got a lot of calls. The algae blooms in Westmont Ponset Pond were enormous that year. Uh, and there were a lot of people who, there were dogs dying. There was a lot of concern. Um, attending these meetings back then, uh, it seemed like there was a lot of conflict. Um, yeah, a lot of conflict between between a lot of the parties involved. And I know Senator Brady and I both lived through the water shortage in Rock. We know how tough it was. We know how much it cost Brockton in economic development back in those years. Uh, and it could have been, uh, it could have left us in a lot stronger position than we are now if it wasn't for that. Of wanting to create the collaboration to get everybody working together on the same page, not only for the ecology of the area, the Halifax, Plimpton, uh, Hanson area, but for Brockton's water supply. Because it became apparent, and he, uh, he took a tour with Pine Dubois, uh, and it became apparent that, yeah, we have a lot of water now, but We'll have a lot of more, a lot of water tomorrow. But what's going to happen five and ten years down the road? And that's a concern. Are we going to be back in the same situation? So he's been uh, he's been through budget earmarks, helping to fund the commission, um, the operating costs, uh, helping to fund certain projects, um, and he's been been sending money to Halifax every year for the alum treatment, which 
in a lot of minds is a waste of money that we should be doing other things to improve the, the situation in modern parts of town without going to control things now. So uh, I'm glad to see everybody coming together at the same table. And I know the Senate is committed not only to Brockton's water supply, but to improvement of the ecology of the entire area of the, that the commission handles. And um, any funding that is needed, I'm sure he will provide. So feel free to ask. Mary? I'm doubling as uh, Vanna White today. Um, <laughs> a little levity Thank can you, always Mary. be. Um, couple words that I've always been that been happening since COVID-19. Pivoting, economic recovery. Like if I hear those on a daily basis, whether it's a personal, you know, <laughs> family life or whether it's within our organizations, particularly with Old Colony Planning Council, where we are overseeing 17 communities, 23 with the um, Area Agency on Aging, we've really become to know our communities a little bit better. You know, we as a regional planning agency working with our county commission um, has to happen. We can no longer say these are our borders and no longer can, should we be talking. You know, hearing what Larry was saying today, you know, in terms of have, you know, having this dialogue and that is not contentious and whatever has happened in the past with um, water for Brockton, and water for the region you know and i think that with the commissioners with the work that's been um underway in presenting um that's been really helpful so from the old colony planning perspective we're going to continue to pivot with you the council the president the counselor from ward four um individual whether it's um plymouth or kingston um we want to be able to play at least the role of of a centers, um, doing what we feel is really necessary and the natural resources, particularly in these times, are even more critical. Um, so the work of, of, the, of the DBW in, in, um, in Brockton, as well as for what the Water Commission has been doing, um, I know we will look forward to continuing our work um, across the board. Being a Brockton resident, um, you know, I, I, it's, it's easy for me sometimes to say we're always focused on Brockton. But the reality is that, as the mayor, you said, it's important that we are thinking in a regional what is good for Brockton is also good for the region. What's good for the region is good for Brockton. And I know you mean that when you say that. And so we will play whatever role that is necessary to assist. We've got some talented staff across the, the way, and um, I rely on them heavily. So um, that's what I would like to at least just acknowledge the, the work that's been done in terms of bringing the, the research forward and to work with you collaboratively. Mary. Hi. I'm going to let you sit here if you want. Hi. Um, I'm Pine Dubois with the Jones River Watershed Association. Um, it might be safe to say I've been working on this longer than anybody in the room, only because I fell into Silver Lake when I moved to the region in 1975. Um, and, and the mission of our group is not Kingston. The mission of our group is the ecology of the system. It's a really big picture thing. And quite frankly, I love the city of Brockton. I think, I think what you're doing in, in service to the Commonwealth is extraordinary. But I also think that um, the, the way that the water supply is being managed is harming you and it's harming us. Um, it's harming the people in Kingston because we're already on water restrictions. I don't know if you are, but we are, you know, because it's all connected. That's our, our big theme song is it's all connected. The reason people came to these shores like the lighthouses on the ceiling here is because of the fisheries and the sustainability of well, the richness of the natural resources. When we step in and try to make those natural resources fit the size of our foot, it does damage in the long term to the generations that follow us. I mean, you've felt it in Brockton, we've felt it in Kingston. We just have to find our way out of that. We have studied it so long, we are convinced that there 
there are really good solutions to this problem. There are affordable solutions, especially working with Al over here. You know, there are things that we can do that will make Brockton even a more exceptional city and make this district one that really knows how to work together. That's where we're coming from. I know we, we've been accused of other things, but that is where we've always come from. And it's about the water quality. It's about the sustainability of the environment. It's not just there to water our lawns and to feed our businesses. It's there for everything because nothing can do without it. And that's where we want to get back to as a region in terms of the economics of the, the, the environmental integrity of it, working with the economics of it. We think it can happen. Honestly, it has to. If it can't happen here, it's not gonna happen anywhere. And that's why I believe, as Mark's last slide said, that this can be an example for everybody because we, we, we have the resources here to do that and we should. All right, so Frank, do you want to say anything? Are you good? Okay, great, thank you. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything on the chat, right, Mary? Okay, I'm just going to take a minute as well to see if anybody sent anything by email. No. Um, Commissioner Jack O'Leary, I know you're joining us on Zoom. Do you have anything to add, questions, or anything to say? Uh, thank you, Joanne. Can you hear me okay? I have an unstable internet connection, apparently. Nope, you're good. Good, okay, great, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I thank you for your, your comments. I'm very encouraged to hear that. We, we definitely, as the theme of this meeting has proceeded, we, we need to work together, um, and I look forward to that. I do wanna point out that in, the, in, in addressing this issue, we also have opportunities. Water resources are a critical item around the world now, and um, our approach to this uh, may very well become I'm a model for other areas and it may develop in a community. So we should keep that in mind. The other thing that um, has crossed my mind is um, having been a teacher at various times, this is a great learning opportunity for students. So we have uh, both Brockton High, which is a very well regarded uh, high school, and the, the schools in the surrounding communities. And we could see this turn into a program where these students get some real world STEM educational experiences by working on this water system together with the water department, with the uh, uh, Jones River Watershed Association and the commission. So I just wanna plant that seed and let's see where it goes. Thank you. Great, thank you, Jack. Mary, can you take us back to the, um, to the PowerPoint that listed a few of the issues that we wanted to address collaboratively. I think it's the third one. I just want to bring this up again because I think um, oftentimes people focus on one and kind of forget to think about some of these other ones. Um, and I think it's really important that in many ways, you know, Larry, the, the report that you're talking about and the work that's being done, that's going to address some of these issues, not necessarily all of them. Um, and I think that's where we need to sit down and talk about what are those things that aren't going to be addressed in that work as you you said and what can we do to work together clearly because you know this I think I've been on this commission now for um, prior to my joining I think um, it had been around for maybe another three years it had just recently kind of come together again um, and there's been a lot of time spent on just Things. And I think it's really time to update later. We have some money now that we can start working on things for. Um, at Old Colony Planning Council, grant opportunities literally left, right, and center are coming at us from everywhere for, for all kinds of stuff. Um, and if we can come together, you know, we've got Pine and, and volunteers like her that are involved in her organization who are also willing to step in, help write some grants, help write some letters of support. Al at Senator Brady's office has already expressed his support as well to help us find the money that we need to do stuff. So I think that's what we want, really want to do next is actually sit down and nail down, you know, what are the three things that we want to accomplish in the next year and how are we going to do that? 
those things together. Um, so that should do together. Um, so I think that's our ambition, really. Anybody else have anything to add or to say? No? Yeah, go ahead. Shirley, can you just talk into the mic, one of the mics? Thank you. And we'll send this PowerPoint around to you oh, guys, perfect. too. So, Thank yeah. You. Now this list of uh, problems, is it something that the commission came about on their own or is it something that was, uh, there was input from, for example, from uh, Ms. Dubois or is this something that was a, a So this is, yeah, so this is basically a summary of what um, the folks that have been involved in commission meetings over the past two years and a little bit longer have kind of put together. Now part of the problem, and I'm just gonna be frank about this is, since I've been on board, Larry's been awesome at sharing information, updating us on stuff, keeping, keeping everything going. A lot of these bullet points can go really deep. And what we really need to understand is what you guys understand, because I bet you that you have a lot more information that we don't know about. For example, when it comes to the quality of water that's coming from Montponset into Silver Lake, you guys probably have data on that that we have and seen. And so maybe there's an assumption being made that actually its quality is really bad when actually maybe it's not, right? So, so I think that's part of what we need to do as well too is, is exchange information transparently and openly so that we're not going off and having a commission meeting and making these assumptions about things that might not be true. Um, and on the flip side, I think there are a lot of questions as well too here that we haven't really answered. So for example, you know, we've heard about alternative supplies. Folks have talked about MWRA since like the 80s and even before then. Um, they've talked about Aquaria, whether to buy it or not buy it. There are other potential sources of water and, and we don't know what those are. Um, and maybe there's money that needs to be put into to a cost benefit analysis of all the options. Um, but again, it's hard for us to do our work as a commission, particularly when we're trying to serve as kind of the bridge between Brockton and the towns, if we don't really know what is always being done in the city um, so we appreciate you Larry helping us out with that as well over the past couple think, of years I think you all are going to be very happy when that RMP comes out because it's, it's going to address all these questions and more so Great. we'll just wait for that to come out um, once it comes out DEP is going to look at it of course because whatever we do with these ponds and lakes now everything goes through DEP when we divert when you ask us to divert it all goes through DEP before mm. we do anything. We don't do anything on our own anymore, like we used to. So it, it, it's all it, we're all it's all guided by DEP. And like I said, a lot of this these these are going to be answered. Because I, I you know I'm kind of I'm kind of happy that this is going on today because it it hasn't been this way. Mm -hmm. um, but like the mayor said, everybody else said. We're here, we, you're our neighbors. We're not out to hurt anybody. We want to work together and square these problems away. Yeah. And we, and we are, we're addressing it. And, and it's costing us quite a bit of money to do, but it has to be done. Yeah. And just on that note as well, today the focus is on Brockton. We're in Brockton. We're talking to you know, a ton of folks from Brockton, but we're also having these conversations with the towns as well. You know, we have talked to the towns about alum and the potential for using floating wetlands or other alternatives for that cyanobacteria treatment. We are talking to the towns about um, better public education around septic systems um, and right. programs to help them address those issues. So mm -hmm. You know, just because we're talking about Brockton mostly here today, know that we're doing this with the other communities as well, too, okay. to make sure that, you know, because everybody's got a part to play in this and everybody's can, contributed. I can tell you that the cranberry growers down there, they, they contributed to this, too, with their runoff from phosphorus from the fertilizer. So, um, yeah. yeah, we're all, if we all work together, we'll, we'll get it done. Yeah. Great. Pleasant Street Wells in Hanson. I've never heard of that before. I'd like to get some more uh, information about that. Not necessarily tonight, but I'd like to get some more of that information. Yeah. Thank you. Do you? Yeah, if you want to address that, Pine, go ahead. Yeah, just give it a couple seconds to kick in. So uh, the, the, there was a project in between 2000 and 2002 between Hanson and Brockton. And the, the, the idea was to 
develop a well field of five wells off of Pleasant Street in Hanson, next to Monponza Pond. It was actually, it's an area next to West Monponza Pond before the outflow to Stump Brook. Um, and the, the idea was to put in wells, put in a, a manganese treatment plant, plummet to the um, Silver Lake treatment plant. The first 10 years was going to go to Brockton. The next, and then after that, Brockton was going to give it to the town of Hanson. It went to DEP for permitting. The problem opposed it was because it didn't take into consideration the surface water diversion already in place at Monponza Pond. And our argument was, you're double dipping. You can't, you can't do that and still sustain anything. It wasn't why we were against what you were trying to do. It was just, you know, personally, if I was you or Mr. Alley over there, I would get rid of the surface water diversion version and put in those wells and plummet to the treatment plant and take that water 365 days a year. And then you would avoid all of that nonsense. Part of the problem happened when uh, the 1964 legislation allowed Brockton to install the Stumpbrook Dam and install the Furnace Brook Dam. And just like the Jones River Dam on Forge Pond, so-called, you built up those ponds a foot. In the, in the case of those two, it was because there were recreational lakes. There was a lot of opposition to the whole thing because they were recreational lakes. It was party town, you know, but Brockton was on fire and you needed it. And people went, okay, so have it when we're not using it for recreation. But as a result, they, it flooded everybody's yards by a foot which is what brought all that landscape pollution into the pond. And then it stopped it from going downstream because there's a dam there that's not letting the water go. So it's sort of, you know, and that's what I meant when I said before, it's like, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot, you know, you, you think you're answering a problem, but you're causing another one. And, and over time, you know, all of that algae and stuff, it's like with the Allen tree, it sinks to the bottom and it's, big cycle of nutrients. And we know this because of the studies and many of those studies were done by engineers in Brockton. So, so you should believe them. I believe them, you should believe them too. And, and so, you know, that's what I mean by there, there are solutions here, just like with the Aquaria, you know, using Aquaria would be a really good idea. Mix Aquaria, with the well, Pleasant Street Wealth Program with Silver Lake. We're not saying don't use Silver Lake. We're saying don't use Silver Lake as much as you're using it because then all of this, it triggers all of these environmental consequences. And I would also just add another layer onto that too. The most forward thinking water utilities in, in, in the world, small and large, are not just thinking about water supply. They're also talking about demand management. Um, and Brockton did run some water conservation programs back in the day, but I mean like way back in the day. Um, and I think it's time as well. And, you know, resources, again, are always an issue, right? But maybe there's funding out there to support this. But things like um, looking at local building codes, they're generally pretty good in Massachusetts anyway. Um, but looking at how things that are being built in Brockton could be built more efficiently when it comes to water so that they use less. Looking at... Um, water restrictions during the summer. So for example, a lot of the communities around Silver Lake and Monponsa Pond, they're always on water restrictions, but Brockton draws that water from their area and we're not on water restrictions at that time. Um, and that kind of factors in this, this level of equity as well too. And why is Kingston on restrictions and Brockton doesn't have to be? And, and I'm a gardener. I've just renovated my lawn this year. I put a lot of money into it. You know, I, I, everybody hates water restrictions. But at the end of the day, in a growing city, particularly if we're talking about expanding in industry and commercial businesses, increasing use in the food sector or um, the marijuana industry or whatever it is, we have to start thinking about managing demand a little bit too. And because a lot of places around the world are finding that actually water locally isn't an infinite resource, it is limited. 
um, or else it's really expensive to start tapping into those last drops, which is essentially what Aquaria is, right? Like almost your last resort. I have a question. Sorry, and it's actually for you, Commissioner. What, what do you think of the what uh, Mr. Bois mentioned about, is that even a possibility? Is that something that could happen? Yeah. yeah. Larry, can you speak into the mic? Sorry. I, I didn't. This is the first time I heard of that. Um, but as far as um, Brockton watching the water, I know probably back in the 80s and 90s, we were almost doing 12 million gallons a day. Mm -hmm. We've done a great job um, as far as our leak detection program. And also, what is expensive now? So people don't use it like they used to. Um, I run an average now is probably 9.4, 9.5 million gallons a day. Even when it was this hot, it, it, it went over that a, a little bit, mm. probably right around 10. Um, I'm watching the lake right now. It's down 26 inches. I thought we were going to get some rain out of this storm. We didn't, Nothing, but yeah. I'm going to discuss it with the mayor, but I might start taking, starting next week, I'm going to take some desal water, probably 2 million gallons. Um, but I can only take so much water because it, it costs money. Mm -hmm. And our budget doesn't allow us to, we, we can't fully fund right now. Maybe next year we can, I don't know how the budget's gonna be. But um, I'm gonna start taking some desal water, but I wanna discuss it with him, with the mayor first. Mm -hmm. So that would only, now we'd only be taking seven out of Silver Lake. I can't take any less out of Silver Lake because the plant won't work correctly. Um, it, 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 it's not a good way to, to run it um, at seven. I mean, we could go down to five, but it, it, it's so variable here in the city as far as water use, and it throws the pumps off. So I'll, I'll discuss it with the mayor, and um, we might take that right until September, October. It all depends, it's, it's all, wet, it's all wet weather. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of rain, then we'll stop. It's a lot cheaper for us to take Silver Lake water than it is diesel. And we have yes. to, and I have to watch my water budget, but if, so. But if I can jump in, if it's cheaper for, in terms of the dollar that's coming out of your pocket. Correct. That's what's cheaper, but it's not cheaper in the big picture of things. Because, well, the damp, because, because of the other consequences that we have. Well, you know, Pine, it, it's Stump Brook. We still have 900,000 gallons going over there a day. It's, oh, I, it's Stump Brook, and we, and we put a lot of money into that. We automated that gate where we don't have to go out there anymore, especially during the wintertime. We could never get out there. I, I, I know that. I yeah, know that. so that's, and, and that's I, flowing. And, you know, that's, and that's another time. And the, yeah, and that's, that's going to be part of that RMP, how we manage these. So, and, and we're doing that now. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I, would, I would just add that if, if you know, 5 million gallons a day out of Silver Lake ended up you know, being a near-term goal, uh, you know, we would be rejoicing. That would be unbelievably productive and uh, what a monumental step that would be. So if, you know, if there could be ways to, to find that water budget in other places and, and only take 5 million gallons a day out of Silver Lake, that would be absolutely unbelievable. Well, well, I'd like to understand that engineering problem because it's the first time I understood that it was a constraint at the facility in terms of the way the pumps work and stuff. Right. We, you know, I, we I, can, I, I want to understand that. Yeah, one. I can bring in that room. Yeah. Would, you know Mike Sassine. Yeah. He runs the plant. Yeah. He, he, he can describe it a lot better than I can. Yeah, no, He's I there every day. So. Yeah. And also, I think, too, we are looking at what could be a regional solution as well. To you right there are so many other communities in our region that are struggling with their water supply as well right now. Um, in Union Point, they need water. You know, there are so many other communities that have Brockton as an emergency supply, but are also thinking about digging additional wells as well too. I think Hanson is one of them. Um, so it's not necessarily all on Brockton either. And I, Chris Cooney was invited here tonight from the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. Chris, I know um, they commissioned a study of a potential for a regional water sewer system. Um, I think it was like 2013-ish too. So there are potential regional solutions that could be investigated as well where 
Brockton could serve as the nexus of a system that then feeds out to other communities who need sewer. I know you guys are already talking to other communities about sewer, but, but water as well too. But you don't obviously want to be selling water if you don't have enough water for yourselves. Um, so it's kind of, you know, one thing follows the other. But um, Jack, are you still on with us? Is there anything else you'd like to say? Sorry, I keep, I keep forgetting that you're on there. That's quite okay. I'm listening in um, and uh, enjoying the conversation. Um, I did want to point, I don't want to get into the weeds technically on this, but just to kind of chime in on what Pine was saying, there are costs involved in taking water, uh, taking water out of Silver Lake that aren't necessarily uh, a, a money. Um, and and the, the biggest cost I see is that the we talk about diverting water from Montpensat Ponds into Silver Lake when there's no algae bloom, but it's not necessarily safe then. The underlying issue is the nutrients in Montpensat Pond. And if we divert from Montpensat when there's no algae bloom, we're still increasing the nutrient load in Silver Lake. And that starts to build up and then there's the potential for a, a, a cyanobacteria outbreak in Silver Lake, which would be a big cost and a big problem. So we need to factor that, that into our water management of these, these, uh, these lakes and ponds. But I think that's probably the solutions brought to the public. Thank you, Jack. Joanne, Mark? I'm uh, just wondering. So, you know, having a good dialogue here. And uh, I think the main thing is we want to make sure it keeps going, right? So do we need to develop a, net, a mechanism to keep the dialogue going? Because just sitting around a table and, you know, like you said, we could come back in a year and we're just talking again, right? So we want to make sure that we keep this going. And, and do we need to agree on some kind of a, a mechanism to keep it going? And I'm just, that's a question for anybody, but I think it's, it's going to be an essential takeaway today because if we don't do that, where does it all go? And I mean, I don't have a problem doing that. I just think that we already have some takeaways. So, so Larry has committed to Ms. Dubois that he's going to have all that information shared, right? Larry is going to generate whenever that document gets generated. We're going to share that as well. Uh, the unknown again is the timing. Um, and I'd like to get more information from whoever has it relative to those wells. I mean, that's the first. I was on the city council. I got elected in 05, one and 06. I never heard of that. That would have been under Mayor Units, right? I never, I never heard of that. I, I can give you all of the, the all of the uh, paper documents because it was in permitting in DEC. So there's a lot of background. There. So we need to share. This is the most synergy right now. Right? Where we got a particular project where everyone's got a path and a couple of chapters. And we can only control our destiny. But right now, I think we have to start to share information mm -hmm. and figure out what the next steps are. We're not going to wait. You don't know me. Also, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think it's CDM was the, was the uh, engineer for that. Okay. Sure. I just wanted to ask Commissioner Rowley, when is that, that RIP expected? When or something kind of the CDM, did, they did that work, then they'll have that in their archive. I'm going to, I'll get it. I'll get that because I, I didn't hear, I haven't heard of that either. So, yeah. But if they have it, then no. Great. <laughs> right. uh, I just, I just want to give an update. So the commissioner will get an update. You know, he and I are going to talk about what he discussed tonight, uh, and then of course we're going to share it uh, with the council president. When I took office on January sixth, that, that's what I said. We're all duly elected the same way. Uh, and we need to continue to, to share information. We'll do that. So once Larry gets an update, we'll we'll pass it on with everybody, Great. including the senator and, and the reps as well. Absolutely. Great. Thank you very much. So the commission does meet on a monthly basis. It's a public meeting. Anybody's welcome to attend. Um, you know, Larry and I exchange emails on on bits and pieces as I need them for the commission all the time. Um, the advisory board, I believe, has two Brockton representatives. Yeah. So you might, Mr. Mayor, want to check into whether the, I think it was um, Councillor Monahan and Jim Bragg, who were the advisory board members. I believe Jim was trying to retire. Last time I spoke to him, it was when 
um, Mayor Carpenter was still here. Um, so I think, I'm not sure if he actually is there anymore. He resigned. He did resign. Yeah. yeah. So you might want to look at appointing the, some, you know, advisory board members for that as well too. They only meet, I think, once or twice a year, essentially to appoint us and renew our we terms. Need, but that's, two, right? so we need two. One has to be a city councilor and city. the other one can be anybody yeah. appointed by the mayor. Um, so that would be fantastic. That's great. So thank you everybody for your time. We thank really you. appreciate it. We'll share the PowerPoint with you. The recording is available as well. Um, and we'll start following up on some of these action items and move forward together. Wonderful. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He just walked out. I need the HVAC guy. It is hot in here. <laughs> I think well, Frank, Frank thinks that we can just continue as long as we are. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully, hopefully, because we've still got a quorum. Yeah. So hopefully, um, the folks that were on come back. So did it dump everybody off? Is what you're saying? There's only one person that I didn't recognize. There's Charles. Charles, um, Don Howard, who's on, Jack. And I think that was Don's driver, his name is Provide. Right. I believe that's what it was. So. So that's easy. Okay. Other than So we just got like a few small items to um need to yeah. Still talking to these? Yeah, okay. Um, so all we've got left on the agenda this evening. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. So all we have left on the agenda today is to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Did you get a copy of those, Mark? Yeah, great. Did you get a copy of those, Mark? Okay. I apologize for the uh, lateness in getting them out. I thought I sent those over earlier. Um, they did not. That's not a problem. I don't have any comments or edits to that. Did you, Mark? Okay. Do you want to make a motion to approve? Okay. All in favor? Joanne, aye. All right. So minutes approved. Um, moving on to finance report. Um, the finance report actually is exactly the same as last meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had no um, changes uh, in the uh, July interest has not been posted yet. We get those statements on the 6th of the month. So um, the exact same balance of uh, 489,000 with 20 and 31 cents. And um, I, oh, thank you. So it's still the same balance as uh, the uh, last meeting, which is $489,220 and 31 cents. And uh, we do have that one invoice uh, that I would uh, appreciate if the commissioners would entertain a, a motion on. What's over to you, Mark? So this is for the um, final design work on the county commission, um, the Central Plymouth County Water District Commission brochure that we put together. 
Um, so once this is approved, they'll release the final files for the brochure, and then I'll be able to get some of those printed and distributed to the towns, including Brockton. Okay, all in favor, Joanne, I. We're good, so that's good to go. Do you need um, Commissioner O'Leary to sign this as well, or is two, two enough? Two is, two is sufficient. Okay. And that's it. That's all. That's all we've got left. Unless anybody else has any other business, I don't know, Al, if you've got any updates. Um, uh, and to ask your question, my, my research tells me two things. Uh, one, that the uh, okay. So you can elicit funds from wherever. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, most com uh, a lot of commissions do that. The Mass Commission and the Status of Women. Their language is almost exactly the, the language that you gave me. Okay. I have, uh, I just want to get confirmation from the Ethics Commission, and I've asked, and I haven't heard back. Okay. And um, I'm going to keep asking until I get an answer. Yeah, That's great. That. No, thank yeah. you, Al. So, Mark, I don't know, I think this was before you came on, but in our operating principles, there's a clause in there at the moment that says that we can essentially accept uh, grants and apply for grants and other funds as and when, and, you know, we agree to do so. Um, there was a question mark about whether the commission was actually able to do that because it's not directly written into the legislation that formed us. Um, but as Al said, a lot of commissions do this. It seems to be accepted practice, um, but he volunteered to kind of do a little bit of research to, to triple check that for us. So. And as soon as I get an uh, answer back from the Ethics Commission. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, I belong to the Social Law Library too. I'm gonna ask them what their opinion is on. I just wanna, I just wanna get some confirmation. I don't wanna put my stamp on it and I feel like the confirmation. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, uh, as far as the funding is concerned, um, the senator, uh, he met with the Ways and Means chairman about two weeks before everything shut down. Mm -hmm. And he was approved for all the funding that he requested for the commission and for Halifax for the alum treatments. Um, <clears throat> since then, a lot, <laughs> a lot of things have happened. Um, the... Uh, in July, the legislature and the governor funded the month. So on a one twelve basis, which they called level funded mm -hmm. from 2020. They didn't want to do it month by month. So recently they did a three month funding for August, September and October. And it's really just three one twelve budgets funded, level funded. The problem with level funded is that they don't, they don't include any earmarks. And right now we're having a lot of problem with social service agencies that depend on earmarks, such as a lot of BAMSI's program depend on earmarks. They're not getting reimbursed. So we've got to find a way around that. As far as a regular budget, it really has to do with when the feds come through with some stimulus money. And I don't think we're gonna go until October 31st before a budget, before we file uh, an entire year budget. Mm -hmm. So at that time, we'll be more, more aware of what we, we're gonna be able to do in the annual budget for the commission. Great. But I assume we're gonna, at least be able to do the operating expenses. Okay. Uh, and at least be able to do uh, the alum treatments to Halifax. But the other money, I don't know how much uh, that was going to come into play again this year. So okay. the minute I find more, I'll, uh, I'll ask questions about what you're going to need and what you're going to need it for. Okay. Great. Thank you, Al. Okay. Have you already heard, have you heard of any, um, sort of stimulus funds for water infrastructure? Like is, uh, I know infrastructure is probably a big topic of discussion in general, but water specifically? There's grants out there, and I'm sure I'm hearing from yeah. you about the point. Yeah, we talked about that part, but internally, um, the Dr. Bell, 
Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't heard of any stimulus, you know, relating to COVID for water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Does anybody else have any, any updates or any other business on anything? Just wanted to confirm the next meeting chair for Wednesday, September 9 at 6 p.m. Yep. Mark, Jack, you've got that as well. And I, a location. Uh, oh, sorry, Jack, you were going to say? I That date works for me. Oh. And would you like to choose a location so we could set it up for you? Um, Zoom, are we Zooming? What do you guys feel? So this was kind of a special meeting because we wanted to have a few people in the room. Maybe we could uh, identify a location and then decide whether to move or not. Yeah. So uh, we have access to the Brockton registry still. Yeah. How many um, fit in there, do you know, with the COVID rules? It's, uh, it, it's over 1,000 square feet. So right now, I, I, it's a minimum of eight per 1,000 which is the general if the governor doesn't change that statute back. Eight maximum per thousand? Per, per, per thousand square feet. And you said the room is? A thousand, a thousand, a thousand square, square feet, feet, so eight. Okay. I'm just always a little worried that normally we don't get more than that. We could do. Kingston? Yeah, that's, that's probably 1,500 square feet. Could you feel right? Yeah. Jack, do you have a, how, how do you feel? Should we try and meet for the next meeting via Zoom or should we try and do it in person? I think we should try and do it in person. Okay. Do we want to shoot? I'm sorry, and, and the, uh, the county office is a good location, so. Uh, we've stayed away from the county office because it technically is not in the district. Uh, we have no problem having everybody. I, at the I, I'm sorry, I mean the, the one in Brockton. Okay. The one in Brockton. And the other option is the Halifax Great Hall, which you could have probably, it's, that's probably 3,000 square feet. Um, and you could invite that's true. all your family members. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we maybe go for that and so that way we wouldn't have to worry that, about? I can target that to see if that, that, that's the largest room that I know of in the district. Yeah, and we did Brockton now, so maybe we should do one of the towns next time. Yeah, Halifax would be good. Okay. Yeah, so we wanted to talk about your proposal for the hydro dredge. Okay, super, great. So let's do that. Um, and on the agenda, we'll definitely talk about the hydro dredge proposal from um, Pine. And at our last meeting, um, I was tasked with putting together a list of kind of sort of solutions or ideas for things that we might want to do as a commission. Um, so I've started putting that together so we can talk about that and think about how we can turn that into like a strategic action plan for ourselves. Um, and that might be a really good document as well to share with the communities and get their feedback and input on as well too. Good. Anything else? And then of course, if anybody wants to add anything to the agenda, just shoot me an email um, and we'll, we'll do that. All right, so the time is now, uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead, Pine. Oh, sorry, can you speak? I got this one. Um, just, uh, you know, in, in uh, following up with uh, DMF, you know, you know, Brad Chase couldn't come mm -hmm. tonight, but um, they're actively working with the um, federal fish and, fish and wildlife not sure whether it's the foundation or the department, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, to do um, a final uh, preliminary engineering, I should call it, for permitting of the fish ladder at the Brockton Dam at Forge Pond. Right. So um, I think that that's going to start moving forward. And um, we're, we're on um, kind of the fence about some money that we turned back to the state um, 
on the Elm Street Dam removal. We didn't, we wound up coming in under budget, believe it or not. So, so um, we wound up turning back some funding that we're trying to get reassigned to that project. So, you know, by then we might know something like that. So it'd be a good topic. Hundred grand. Um, no, it's in the AG's office. I should have a swing with the AG. I'll talk to you. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Okay, great. All right. Anything else? All set. All right. So, yes. Um, uh, I. <laughs> Second. Excellent. Jack, you're all set, right? Uh, uh, I'm ready to vote. If we are going to adjourn, sure. Yep. So motion to adjourn. Aye. Second. Joanne, aye. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Yes. Sorry. Yes. On paper, it's perfect. Excellent. Good. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Well, thank you, Jack, for joining us and anybody else who's listening out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.